San Francisco 49ers player Ricky Pearsall was the victim of an attempted robbery that turned violent, resulting in injury. Legal questions are now being punted, especially having to do with the teenage suspect. Our next guest will share his insights around this case and the implications for both sides. Ashton and Price is a prominent personal injury law firm right here in Sacramento County, here to help us understand the legal plays at work. We have Craig Ashton of Ashton and Price. Hey, Craig. Hey, good morning. Good. I, I like all the uh, sports puns. We have to we have to have them in there, tying this into it. And Craig, we know you're not a lawyer on this specific case, but can you explain what legal charges are being brought against the 17-year-old involved in the attempted robbery of Ricky Pearsall? Sure. So this happened on August 31st, mm -hmm. so just very recently. Happened near Union Square. So just to give you some context. So Stockton and Geary, that's where Demon Marcus is. And so if you go across the way to essentially post yeah. and Stockton, that's where the Apple store is, so right around that area. So around 3.30 in the afternoon, what happened was is that there was a shooting, three shots were fired, mm -hmm. and Ricky Persall, his uh, Rolex was trying to be uh, stolen, and so the charges are attempted murder, wow. which is big, and then a t second uh, degree attempted robbery, and then assault with a semi-automatic weapon. Wow, okay, so can you explain how the decision is made to try a minor as an adult in California, and what factors influence that? Right, so the just juxtaposition right now with the tragic shooting that happened in Georgia at Appalachia High School, that, that individual was 14, but automatically charged as an adult in the adult system. In California, you are automatically charged as a juvenile. So ultimately what happens is, is that they want to see whether or not they can rehabilitate somebody who's under 18, mm -hmm. and they take a look at the facts of their prior criminal history, they take a look at uh, the facts of the crime. In this case, because the individual is 17, and is being charged in juvenile court, they have what's called a transfer hearing. Okay, so what are the key differences between how the juvenile system and the adult system handle cases like this? So the first thing is, is that you get charged in juvenile court, so he's not charged as an adult yet, mm -hmm. then the district attorney has to ask the juvenile court judge to have a transfer hearing to determine whether or not this person is rehabilitatable. Mm -hmm. So they will look at the facts of the crime. In this case, he's in trouble in that he's 17, close to 18. 3.30 in the afternoon at Union Square on a Saturday with a semi-automatic weapon going after somebody and shooting three rounds. So the issue is, is that he will be either tried as an adult or in the juvenile system. If he stays there, he gets a judge trial instead of a jury. And then ultimately he's in the juvenile system in terms of incarceration, so more like a ranch or juvenile facility, much less harsh than the adult side. And then uh, basically he charges and the outcome can be sealed which is different from the adult side. So Craig, what might be some of the arguments both for and against trying the 17 year old as an adult? Well, if I was gonna argue trying as an adult, 17, almost an adult, apparently he's got another juvenile case that's active in San Joaquin County. So mm -hmm. after this, he's gonna get transferred back to Tracy for San Joaquin County. Mm -hmm. 3.30 in the afternoon with a semi-automatic weapon, going after somebody with a gun in a public uh, space in San Francisco. My feeling, he should be tried as an, uh, an adult but he may have a background that shows that he is re rehabilitatable. Mm -hmm. And if he is, then we don't want to put a somebody who's 17, basically a child still in the eyes of the law, into a system that's going to make them worse rather than better. Yeah. And if the 17-year-old is tried in juvenile court, what could be the possible outcomes and how might they differ from those in adult court? Yeah, juvenile court just wants to make sure are you rehabilitatable. So we don't want to put him in a place that's going to have him come out as a hardened criminal. So the idea would be the judge will take a look at what's in the best interest of the child, because yeah. he's still a child, to determine whether or not, based upon the specific facts of this individual, that they're better off in the juvenile system, which is less mm -hmm. harsh, more into rehabilitation than more like punishment in the adult system. And you were mentioning some of his prior records. What role do the severity of the crime and the suspect's prior record play in determining how a minor is charged? Yeah, quite a bit. So, I mean, if you got a history of tagging, mm -hmm. you, know, you might just be an artist and so you just trespass versus a history of armed robbery. Mm -hmm. And if you repeatedly are engaged in armed robbery or something violent, then the court is much less likely to say you can be rehabilitated. Yeah. So in a case like this, you know, the facts are to me, just on the face of them, yeah. shooting somebody three times at Union Square at 3.30 in the afternoon with a semi-automatic weapon, that's gonna be hard for me to understand as to why that person wouldn't be charged as an, or tried as an adult. Yeah, and it's good to know that Ricky Pearsall's okay. We saw yeah. him recently yeah. thanking the first responders. Through and through. Yeah. So basically what happened was is he tried to grab his Rolex, mm -hmm. instead of allowing him to have it, wrestled him down, then that's when the gun was reached for. Yeah. So the 
The public defender is saying this is not attempted murder. This is merely just a robbery, and it was a quasi self-defense once a 49er took down a 17-year-old, and so that's kind of the way that they're approaching it. Mm -hmm. But bottom line is, yeah, Ricky Pasol, what a stud. Yeah. I mean, yeah, getting shot through and through, and then uh, one day in the hospital and went back to the practice facility the next day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's the kind of things that legends are made of, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Craig, thanks for joining us, keeping right. us up to date. Thank you. All right, to our viewers, for legal advice, head on over to ashtonandprice.com.